Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Saturday live stream. Um, no way to say it. There are some massively high Bitcoin fees, and we're going to talk about why that is and uh, why they are like that and just how high they are and potentially could actually be. So it really all comes down to a very simple thing, which is uh, ordinals and runes. And essentially what it is is NFTs, uh, on the Bitcoin blockchain. Now, people have talked about this for quite some time. It's a very simple type of thing. And uh, they've also has fungible tokens, uh, which will be through runes and things like that. But we can see that, like for even me, like I was just dabbling into it, trying to figure out what it actually is. I bought wizard tokens, which are BRC20. And then also I uh, purchased a rune stone about a week, week and a half ago or so. And it's not a big deal. It's just something that purchased on the, on the Bitcoin blockchain to make these things more usable. But because of these things that people are doing, we're all doing, we're seeing a massive spike. And, and of course, some people will say, well, this is a massive spike. This isn't a big deal. This isn't, you know, really that bad uh, for these uh, transaction fees to be $60 or $80 or $160 or $300. It doesn't matter because Bitcoin can get all over that or they can get, it can actually get over that. And I, I, I look at that and I wonder to myself, is this what the future of, of finance is supposed to look like? Are we supposed to pay these types of fees as we continually evolve into Bitcoin or is there a way to possibly solve all these issues? So if we just take a look at the, the, the fees themselves on this channel, me specifically, I've been a very big fan of Ethereum. Let's be honest, Ethereum layer one fees are ridiculous. And we can just see here, this is from uh, bitinfocharts.com. And you can see that in blue are Bitcoin fees and in red are the Ethereum fees. We know that of course, Ethereum has just been, you know, massively high. It's just how it is. And of course, over here in March, uh, we had a, uh, a big peak of Ethereum fees of $30 and Bitcoin transaction fees of $16, which seems actually quite high. And this is exactly what we were worried about. This is what we're worried about, you know, coming into the halving. This is what we were worried about going into bull markets. And if you think these fees are high, imagine how high the fees will be for Bitcoin and Ethereum going into the next bull market. I shudder to think how I can actually be. But I think there's a resolution to it. We'll talk about that in a bit. So now we're coming over here. Today is the 20th. Happy 420. Hey, I just realized that. 420. Huh. Congratulations, we made it. Happy 420 to everybody, uh, especially in those uh, qualified countries and states to really enjoy 420. Good for you guys. But uh, we can see that on 419, the Bitcoin average transaction was $18 and Ethereum average was $4. So imagine that. Ethereum, again, is getting trounced in the transaction department by Bitcoin, which is kind of crazy. And then, of course, if we take a look at it and we want to verify these things, this was a, a message put out by uh, Udi. Udi is uh, one of the leads over there for, for ordinals. And he said, hey, attention all, this was April 13th. This was like a week ago. And he said, attention laser eyes. We're declaring a temporary ceasefire and will allow you to broadcast your coffee transactions. It's pretty funny. For one week until the halving. But after that, when we start to mint runes and ordinals, and actually he said ordinals, they didn't say about runes. He goes, we're going to take over and uh, hopefully we don't crash Bitcoin. And I was taking a look at it and I just posted this, you know, today. And I was just asking people like, what have you seen as far as the transaction fees? And this is from Pat Am Dreamer. And he put this out and I was blown away. I couldn't believe it was this high. He goes, yeah, he goes, they've gone down, but they're still 3x the normal. And of course, these are going to fluctuate. And depending on how fast you actually want to put things out as far as uh, moving your Bitcoin around the globe, low priority is $127, medium $153, and high three hours ago, again, $173. Also, we take a look at uh, bit info fees. We can see that eh, it's not really that bad as time has gone on. Now it looks like if you have a, <clears throat> if you want to move anything around 20 minutes, it's 100 bucks. An hour, 82. If you want to wait six or 24 hours, that's reasonable. But if we take a look at mempool, this is the one that I like. Uh, it has been fluctuating massively. I've seen high priority uh, transaction fees, which, you know, again, 20 minutes, come on, um, which is nice. Let's be honest. It's way better than any bank that's out there for doing wire transfers, two to three business days. Get out of here. But yeah, of course, 10, 20 minutes is pretty nice. But I've seen everything from this price right here, $25 
all the way up to $278. It was just insane. And that's just how it is, of course, because the blockchain is really getting put under duress by runes and ordinals and, of course, minting and, and, and transcription. So if we take a look at that, I was just thinking to myself, well, these are just what I see. This is the data that comes in, but why don't I test it myself? So I just did a quick test transaction to see what the fees are. And yeah, it was true. This was, I just did this like 20, 20 or 30 minutes ago. And the fee itself is $65 and 27 cents, just to send some, just a, a minuscule amount of Bitcoin just around. And that's just how it is. So the question I have for everybody is twofold. <clears throat> First of all, is this the future of finance? Is this the new normal of what we're going to see? Because I hate to tell it to you, everybody, uh, ordinals and runes aren't going away. Now, we did an actual video of ba, 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 runes itself. And it was a quick video, it was like five minutes or so. And it was supposed to reduce the workload of the Bitcoin miners and reduce the transactional cost. And I linked this video in the description. Of course, you can also just search for Digital Asset News Runes, it'll come up. So I was like, well, this would be great. But unfortunately, it's not playing out to be that way as everything is being played around on on the blockchain so again if we're thinking about it the question is, is this the future and is this what the white paper from satoshi nakamoto in 09 is this what we're supposed to be doing and it says right here bitcoin a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system is this how we do things is this how we're going to move things around i'm not saying that runes and uh, ordinals are an albatross and should be stopped because that's not my position. My position is we need to figure out a way to make this a little bit more cost effective. And for that, it's going to be growing pains. And those growing pains are also going to, unfortunately, get into potentially the price of Bitcoin as we start to see these fees go up because that's what's happening. So lastly, I will say like this, and I've said this before, there has been narratives right now being floated around, a lot of those being quite easy to pick up. Web3 gaming, decentralized exchanges of what, especially what's going on with centralized exchanges, and then the DPIN narrative, decentralized physical infrastructure network. And I think that'll be the big play coming into the next bull run. But I've always, well, I haven't always said, but I've taken a look and and all the things that are going on with, with Bitcoin and of course with Ethereum and some other actual layer ones. And that's why I think layer twos are gonna be the big new thing for this, this bull run. Imagine having a layer two or a side chain for Bitcoin to do all these things to reduce the actual transactional cost and not congest the network so much because it's not just the fees that are going up. I guarantee you, if you try to send some Bitcoin right now, it's gonna take some time. There's a great website, l2.watch, and there's eight or nine different Bitcoin side chains and L2s either in development or in pre-test net right now. If you wanna see of what could potentially be the next big thing, definitely take a look at that. And that's where we're at. That's where we're at right now. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section. And then lastly, I'll just say that, you know, I just did a quick little poll to see, you know, who's been paying what. And uh, Dan Gambardello came out and said that he paid like, I think this might be a joke, $300 on one transaction yesterday. I couldn't believe it. Uh, Rambo Doom, Big E, $89. What else have people said? Oh, then someone said, hey, does Bitcoin have a website that shows gas fees? Yeah, there's a great website we just took, we took a look at, mempool.space. I'll link in the description so you could find that. And um, yeah, everybody says, hey, that's how it goes for ordinals. That's how it goes for, maybe this is for runes. And we'll go from there. Anyhow, let me know what you think this, what's going to happen. But uh, I still think layer twos and side chains are potentially the future. And then moving from, from that into just a little price action, we had a, <clears throat> we did a talk yesterday and we talked about uh, miners and what the halving is. And I talked quickly about, well, not real quickly, but about um, dynamic dollar cost averaging. Go check that video out from yesterday. And one thing that, and if, if you're not familiar with this, this is where you use the time and risk bands instead of like buying all the way through in dollar cost averaging, which is what I usually do, quite honestly. There's a, I think there's a better way. It's called dollar cost averaging, but dynamic. And when you get in these wristbands, 
this is when you start to load up or you, you know, as you, as the price goes down, which let's be honest, there's a black swan event around every corner. I don't know what's going to happen in the Middle East. I don't know what's going to happen with Jerome Powell. I don't know what's going to happen with the treasury. I don't know if it's going to be quantitative easing or quantitative tightening. I don't know. I don't think anybody really knows. So if you, th if you think everything goes in a straight line, we all know that's ridiculous. So this is why, you know, investing or dollar cost average, this is what I'm following a lot more stringently, which is as the price goes down into these, these risk bands, this is when I start to pick up more. And then like the example would be right now, the risk band for Bitcoin is in zero point, actually zero point, yeah, it's 0 0.6 to 0 0.7, which is a little bit high. But as it goes down and you start to get into these, these lower wristbands, this is when you start to buy. And then if it goes into lower wristband, meaning that the price is going down for whatever happens, whatever black swan event happens, you double up, you quadruple up, you six tuple up, and you go from there. But one of the things that I didn't show yesterday because I didn't go through the necessary steps, I'm sorry, I apologize, is I want to take a look at what if you had done that dollar cost average in these wristbands and you'd done that in a, in a dynamic way and you just stopped accumulating after 0 0.69 and you just said, I'm not gonna buy any, I'm not gonna buy any more, but I'm gonna dynamically invest like we just took a look here. And I wanna show you how much better it is. Check this out. So if you did a DCA equal amount, you dollar cut, you put 10 bucks a day. You started on, I just picked June 1st, 2022. I mean, we could have done January 1st, but you know, whatever. And just picked a, an arbitrary day. You can do this on Ben's website. This part's free. And I said, okay, 10 bucks of Bitcoin. And I end on, well, yesterday. You can see that for Bitcoin, I invested 6,000, roughly 7,000 bucks. And I got back 16,617. That's a 141% increase. But if I would have done the dynamic DCA, as far as the percentage goes, here I'm up 141%. Dynamic DCA, I'm up 203%. Just for stopping when it goes above 0 0.69. And then I double, quadruple up when the price goes lower. I could have done that. And it's, it's like the easiest thing of all time. But what's, what's more interesting, take Ethereum. Because you can do this on, you can, ch you can choose different assets. Same thing. If I did the thing, same thing with Ethereum, I put in 6,890 bucks. I'm up 80%, 12 grand. Not bad. I put a dynamic DCA, I'm up 118%. And now let's go down here. How about if we did actually Cardano, which is worst, worst performer, right? One of the worst performers. Uh, if I had a DCA, I've been up a whopping 27%. Woo! Dynamic DCA, 44. I would have doubled almost, almost doubled just by not buying at certain points and then doubling up. How about Polkadot? DCA equal amounts, I'm up 14%. Now I'm up 20%. Polka dots, really a laggard. It really is. How about Avalanche? DCA equal amounts, 108%. Dynamic DCA, 150%. So again, I'm just showing you just how this works out with Dynamic, D Dynamic DCA. I'm going to try to follow that a little bit more stringently because I can just, just by doing something very simple, I can increase my ROI. I don't have to do any, really do anything. And then as a reminder, uh, if you sign up for the website, like I said, like this part here, the DCA part, that's free. But for the dynamic DCA, of course, that's a, a paid part. Ben's, I think, still having the, the sale that's going on, I'm not for sure. But there's a link in the description, you get 10% off the first month. And if you do that, turn on these notifications. You download the app and it comes in and goes, hey, the Bitcoin risk is at blah, blah, blah. And you're like, oh, maybe I should either not buy or buy some more. Anyhow, just want to throw that in there so everybody knows. But that's... That's it for that. Um, again, this is into the cryptoverse. Links in the description. Ben's website, if people know, it's like the first link you're going to see after I posted the uh, link to the Bitcoin white paper. And that is it for today. So look, just want to make this quick on a Saturday. Beautiful day here in Puerto Rico. Go enjoy the day.